How did Blue Origin fail to compete with SpaceX on NASA's $2.9 billion contract? There's more we can dig up about this. Spearheading a progressive space company that could make headlines in the news as a great and successful company isn't a day job. Jeff Bezos has faced a lot, and it seems he bit off a bit more than he can chew by founding Blue Origin. But at least did he know that there would be more challenges to reaching the moon successfully. We are talking about challenges bigger than the ones he met during the days when he started Amazon. And failing is not an option. Not when Bezos has promised the world that he will transport humans to the moon and back as a tourism adventure, which will exist for a lifetime. But from the happenings at Blue Origin, which we have watched so far, luck has turned against Jeff Bezos on his quest to reach the moon, and consider how bad that can be. Now, coming back to the question of the day, how did Blue Origin happen to miss out on a whopping $2.9 billion NASA contract and lose it to SpaceX? Let's start off by scrutinizing Blue Origin's achievement compared to SpaceX. In order to achieve their goals, both companies had to start small in the beginning. SpaceX built the Falcon 1, a small non-reusable rocket that eventually succeeded, and with the money from new investors, they were able to scale up to the Falcon 9. SpaceX's operation is actually comparable to Tesla's. Meanwhile, Blue Origin chose the New Shepard, a small reusable rocket capable of transporting wealthy people to space. The difference is that SpaceX succeeded, whereas as Blue Origin has yet to launch a paying passenger, despite having been in business for longer than SpaceX and having access to more funding for the greater part of their history. Blue Origin's problem is a need for more innovation or better management. SpaceX rapidly develops new prototypes and tests them to their limits. Blue Origin has to set a strict goal for itself, and they need to innovate more if they truly want to achieve the future. They also need to test more frequently and start meeting their own deadlines. They need to stop doing things the old-fashioned way, because the only news we've heard about their upcoming new Glenn rocket for several years has been delay after delay. That's not good, and they'll only be able to compete with SpaceX if they change their business model. That's just a few of the overviews and the backlashes going on in Blue Origin. On the other hand, SpaceX has flown the Falcon 9 34 times. 32 of them were successful. They have launched 32 payloads into orbit. Blue Origin has done nothing at the moment, but they have not delivered a payload or flown a single paying customer into space. The New Shepard can only fly to, technically space, at an altitude above the Kármán line. It is entirely incapable of putting a payload into orbit. Blue Origin has grand plans for the New Glenn, but it appears that the chances are slim. The New Glenn, the beautiful powerhouse they've demonstrated, will have an awe-inspiring payload capacity, but the company is yet to build or fly the New Glenn. That puts them, optimistically, five years behind SpaceX, and pessimistically, ten years behind SpaceX. SpaceX's level of innovation. So far, SpaceX has launched seven Falcon 9 rockets into orbit, with more than 20 payloads pending launches. Yes, that is a very ambitious schedule. In fact, lifting that number in a single year would be a record for any launch via. The SpaceX Starship rocket is noticeably larger than the other lunar landers from the beginning. The Blue Origin rocket is nowhere near the size of the Starship. This is an instance from the NASA report outlining their decision. The scale of SpaceX's lander architecture presents numerous benefits to NASA. First, we find SpaceX's capability to deliver and return a massive amount of down-mass, up-mass cargo noteworthy, and its related capability regarding its mass and volumetric sizes for scientific payloads, both of which far exceed NASA's initial requirements. Furthermore, SpaceX's bids were less expensive. SpaceX was charging $2.9 billion, while Blue Origin charged nearly three times that amount. So, SpaceX's proposal not only does more, but it's also cost effective, except for Dynetics. Blue Origin and a few congressmen whose districts would have benefited from those two companies' proposal. And better still, SpaceX is covering the majority of the contract's development costs. After all, they were already making the Starship rockets. Although the Starship is a really good machine on paper, it has flaws, and the Blue Origin may be equally capable of building spaceships that look like the Starship. The cost appears to be the main motivation behind NASA awarding the contract to SpaceX. However, Blue Origin's offering needs to be revised and only suitable for demonstration mission. The challenge is to make it successful. The follow-up missions for the actual landings will need to be redesigned to meet NASA's requirements. So, the danger is that SpaceX has a massive head start and is already way ahead, whereas Blue Origin has wasted much of their initial effort, still needs to redesign their vehicle, and has yet to receive a contract. SpaceX intends to colonize the entire solar system, beginning with Mars. Blue Origin's vision for the future is of massive factories on 
various planets using autonomous rockets to ship materials to humanity, which is currently living in massive space stations. Finally, Blue Origin is simply irrelevant on the news than SpaceX because it is moving much slower. Blue Origin began two years before SpaceX, which many people are unaware of because Blue Origin kept all of their operations secret until recently. BO has completed single-stage vertical test hops, landed their stage, and landed their capsule during that time. Having learned all these, what exactly is the corruption in Blue Origin? Let's diligently dig that as well. More than 20 current and former employees have accused Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin company of creating a toxic work environment and failing to follow proper safety protocol. In an essay posted on the Lioness storytelling platform, the workers claim that there is sexism at the Amazon founder's Kent Washington-based Space Flight Services Company. It's one of only two stories on Lioness.co, which was founded in 2020 and claims to post articles on topics related to larger social issues and exposing wrongdoing. Employees at Blue Origin, led by former employee communications director Alexandra Abrams, claim that numerous senior leaders have been known to be consistently inappropriate with women. They also claim that many corporate executives were unapproachable and had a clear bias against women. There were also safety concerns, with the group claiming that the Blue Origin appeared more concerned with eating billionaires Richard Branson and Elon Musk to space than with addressing safety issues that would have slowed the schedule. Bezos launched into space on July 21st, the 52nd anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon land, a date he chose for historical significance. Bezos settled to his guns even after Virgin Galactic's Richard Branson accelerated his own flight from New Mexico and beat him to space by nine days. Last year, company leaders appeared impatient with the new Shepard rocket schedule of a few flights per year, preferring more than 40. With the resources and staff available, some of us felt that leadership's race to launch at such an incredible speed was seriously compromising flight safety. According to leaders' verdict, Blue Origin in a statement said that it tolerates no form of harassment or discrimination and stands by its safety record. New Shepard is the safest space vehicle ever designed or built. Currently, a committee in the United States House of Representatives is looking for a briefing on the investigation being conducted by the FAA into Blue Origin. Do you remember when the FAA was conducting their investigation into the previous rocket explosion that Blue Origin experienced? A hearing on the findings of the investigation is being sought by the United States Committee. The chair of a subcommittee that is responsible for space issues and a top Republican have requested a briefing on the investigation into the booster failure that occurred with Blue Origin's New Shepard 23 from the Federal Aviation Administration. How will Blue Origin defend itself against the FAA? And will the FAA give Blue Origin permission to launch another rocket into Earth's orbit despite pollutions and harmful impact on human organs and health? Blue Origin's failure depends on the answer to these questions. Blue Origin has a lot to face come 2023. You can also take a look into how the BE-4 explosion bankrupts Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos as well. Just click on the video to know more.